In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a widget opt-in with Bloom. Now, what the widget opt-in form is, is an opt-in form, much like any of our other opt-in forms created with Bloom, except this opt-in form is created in the form of a widget, which means you can take that widget and place it in any of the widget-ready areas on your website, uh, such as your sidebar, or maybe your footer, or any other widget-ready area. So if you have these areas in your site and you want to add an opt-in form there, that's what the widget opt-in is for. And as you can see, here's an example of a, of a blog post I have. And on the right, I have my sidebar. And here I have a subscribe form that we created with Bloom. And um, this is an example of that widget opt-in. So going back to the dashboard, I'm going to explain how to create this opt-in form. And first of all, I'm going to remove the form that I currently have and start from the beginning. And we're going to go through all the steps for creating this. So I'm going to remove this widget. And then I'm going to head over to the Bloom settings. So look for the Bloom settings tab on the left and then create, click on the opt-in forms link. And this is going to bring you to a list of all of your currently created opt-ins as well as a button that you can use here to create a new opt-in. And I'm going, and as you can see here, here's the, the widget opt-in that, that I just showed you that I created uh, for demonstration purposes. And now I'm going to delete it so that we can start over. Okay, so important thing to note is that before you can create any opt-in form with Bloom, you first have to add a new account. And um, these accounts are for email marketing systems. And these are the accounts that manage your lists and th the accounts you use to you know, send your emails to those lists. An example would be MailChimp or Aweber, Constant Contact, etc. And um, so Bloom supports 12 different um, systems at, the, at its launch, and we will be adding more systems as you know, um, time allows. And to get more details about how to um, sync an account with Bloom, we've created a, a detailed tutorial that goes into um, in-depth detail about how to add every single different account type and the different authorization steps that are uh, needed for each account type um, to give Bloom access uh, to that list. So you can, you can think of Bloom as the bridge between your website and these email systems, like I said, such as MailChimp. So you might have signed up with MailChimp and created a list and you've been sending emails to that list. And uh, where Bloom comes into play is it adds forms onto your website that allows subscribers to subscribe to those lists. So like I said, before you can actually create a functioning opt-in form, you first have to have somewhere for those people to subscribe. And like I said, you're going to want to check out that tutorial uh, for details. So I'm not going to go into details now, but um, in general, to add a new, a new account, click on the accounts tab here, then click on the new account button, and it's going to walk you through the steps. And you can see I've already added a bunch of accounts, and here's the list of all the accounts I've added, as well as um, the, the uh, lists associated with those accounts. So heading back to the opt-in management tab, we're going to click the new opt-in button and this is going to allow us to create a new opt-in and you can select from any of the six opt-in types. And uh, for this particular tutorial, we'll be, we'll be, we will be exploring the widget opt-in type. So I'm going to click on the widget link here. And this is going to uh, launch the opt-in creation process. And there's just two steps here. The first is the basic setup step and this is where you're going to give your opt-in form a name. I'm just going to call it widget so that I remember. It's just something to remember it by. So I'm going to remember this is my widget opt-in. And then you're also going to uh, choose your account, which is um, what I was just referring to. So you're going to want to select an account and then the list associated with th that account that you want um, people to subscribe to with this particular opt-in form. So for example, I have an Aweber account um, s um, added to Bloom. And so I'm going to select that Aweber account and then it's going to give me um, a list of all the different lists I have in that account and I can choose one that I would like to associate with this uh, particular opt-in form. And once you've selected your account and selected your list, you can move on to the design settings. And whenever you create a new opt-in form, no matter what type of opt-in form you're, gonna, you're going to create, you're going to get um, presented with this list of pre-made templates. And uh, what we've done is we've uh, done a lot of the hard work for you and um, kind of compiled all these different collection of design settings into 
what we're calling uh, pre-made templates. And you can think of these as um, kind of starting points. And you can just kind of browse through here and, and select one that's kind of close to what you're looking for. And um, like I said, we've put time into these and they're all going to look great. So you can use them just as is. But you can also uh, customize absolutely everything. So like I said, these are really just, you can really think of these as kind of uh, pre-made selections of design settings. But all of these can be created you know, from scratch from Bloom's design settings and therefore everything within these forms can also be changed and customized with Bloom's design settings. So just browse through this list and, and pick something um, that looks good to you. So I'm just going to go with this kind of basic orange opt-in form. And then I'm going to click next uh, to move on to the customization steps. And so these are the, the, the Bloom design options. And Bloom comes with quite a few design options, like I said, and it allows you to customize every part of your opt-in form. And there's so many options that we actually created a whole, whole different tutorial that goes into details about these design options. So I'm going to move through them briefly and touch on each one. But if you want to learn more, um, be sure to go check out our design uh, options tutorial. At any point during the design process, you can click this preview button. And that's going to give you a preview of, of the opt-in form that you are creating. And each time you make a change, you can preview that change. So if we click preview right now, we're going to see our pre-made template that, that we selected. It looks just like that little thumbnail um, on the previous page. Um, we have this centered image, orange background color, uh, red button, and a gray form background. And the first bit of design options are your opt-in title and opt-in message, which you can customize. And uh, right now it just says subscribe to a newsletter, but if you'd like to change that, you could. I might say uh, subscribe to our blog, perhaps, if this particular list is an RSS to email list or something along those lines. You can customize the message, and this is the text that, uh, the smaller text that appears below the title. And like I said, uh, every time you change something, you can check it out in the preview and see our um, title has changed here to, to subscri subscribe to our blog. Next up are the image settings, and here you can upload your own custom image if you don't like the one that, that we have here. And you can also change the orientation of the image to above or below the text. Right now it's sitting above the text, but if you like to change it to below text, you can do that. And as we preview it, you can see that the image is then placed below instead of above. And um, you could also choose to have no image if you like if you like. So you could there's no there's no um, no one's forcing you to have an image. You could just have text, which can look perfectly fine. And you can upload your own image as well. Next is the image loading animation, and this affects the animation that is applied to the image when the, when the page first loads. And it's just something that can kind of catch your visitor's eye. And by default, it slides up and fades in, but you can try something else. We have a bunch of different fun animations here you can, you can test out. Uh, flip is a nice one that I like. So if I load this, you can see the image kind of flips in. Like I said, it's just uh, an extra design touch that, that you can choose. And kind of the more crazy you get, probably the more um, it's going to attract the eye of your visitors, but it's really you know, up to you. Next up, we have the hide image on mobile option. And what this does, is it allows you to um, hide the image when someone visits your website on a mobile device. And the reason this is useful is because, um, you know, the bigger your form gets, the more, you know, text you add, the longer your header and, and messages, the bigger and bigger the form becomes. And especially on mobile, as the screen size is reduced and the width of the form is reduced, the height of the form gets increased because that text is kind of squished into a smaller area. And you can end up with a really long opt-in form, which might not be ideal. It's kind of nice to, to try and keep the opt-in form height no taller than the size of a phone screen. And so one way to uh, make more room for your text and make that opt-in form smaller is to remove the image and so you can choose to do so with this option. Next up is the opt-in styling settings and these are the basic uh, design settings for the overall opt-in box. First of which is the background color which we have set to an orange right now but if you wanted to change that to more of a red perhaps we could do that. And if we preview you can see that our, our background color is now changed to more of a red. You can adjust the header font and body font. So there's uh, dozens of fonts here to choose from. And you can also adjust the text color. So um, 
you want to adjust the text color based on your background color. So right now we have a dark background color and therefore a light text shows up nicely, but you can also choose to use a dark color text um, if you had a lighter, lighter background color. So let's say we have light text and a white background color. Well, that's not gonna work very well because the white text isn't gonna show up at all on top of a white background. So in that particular situation, we'd probably want to choose a dark text instead. And as you see here, that's gonna show up much more nicely. But if we are using our um, red orange background color, well then the light text is gonna do just fine. Next up is the corner style, which affects the four corners of the opt-in box, and you can choose to make those rounded if you like. So selecting rounded corners, as you may expect, uh, rounds those corners just slightly, which looks nice. And uh, finally, we have the option to add a border to your opt-in box, and you can add that border to any of the four sides of your box. If we and once you choose to add a border, you're going to get some additional border options. So if I choose a, a full full border here. You're also going to get the option to uh, select a border color as well as a border style. So first of all, I'm going to adjust my border color and I'm going to make it uh, kind of a dark gray like that. And then also adjust the border style if you like, but I'll show you the standard style first, which is just kind of a solid border as you see around the edges here. But you could choose to make that dashed or uh, we also have a double border and an inlaid border. And finally, this uh, striped border, which is kind of a more of like a letterhead style. And so if we select that, it kind of gives you a fun effect there. And um, you can also choose which uh, sides of your opt-in box, like I said earlier, that this border appears on. So if you, th if you like this kind of striped effects effect, but maybe you think it's a little too much having it on all four sides, well, you can choose to have it just on the top maybe. And that might be a, a better choice for this particular design. Next up is the form setup, and this affects the input fields and the subscribe button within the form, which is that um, area in the gray area here, the email form and, and the subscribe button. And the first option is you can choose to include a name field. So if you want to collect the subscriber's name in addition to the email, you can do that. And you can also uh, adjust the text within the button. So by default, it says subscribe but you could change it to something else such as join today or whatever you like. And finally, the button text color, which also can be changed from light or dark. And you want to adjust that based on the background color of the button, which you can adjust in the next setting, which is the uh, form styling uh, section. And here you can adjust uh, much like the corners of the opt-in box as a whole. You can also adjust the corners of the input fields. So if we wanted to change those to square, you could do that. And as, as you see here, these, the button and the input fields become squared instead of rounded. And we can adjust the form background color and the button color. So let's say you wanted to change the button to green, perhaps. We could do that. And as you can see, it changes to green. And this kind of muted green looks good with our orange. So I'm liking that. And so I'm gonna move on to the next uh, section, which is the edge style setting. And the edge style affects um, the separation between the form and the image in the text. So in this case, it's the separation between that dark gray and our red orange. And by default, it's just a solid line, but we can choose something a little bit more fun, such as this zigzag edge. And if we take a look at that, you can see now this um, edge has become this fun zigzag style. And if you want something, something maybe a little bit more reserved, you can do this carrot edge, which looks, which looks nice, kind of this classic arrow triangle pointing down to the form fields. See, so yeah, I can play with those and uh, choose any of, uh, of these five edge styles. Next up, we have the footer text, which adjusts the text um, that appears below the input fields. If you so choose to put text there, you can input it here and you can add a little message about maybe about your email list or maybe a link to your privacy policy or um, put any important notes you want to add there. And next up, you can adjust the success message, which is, which is the message that appears after a visitor has successfully subscribed to your list. And then finally, you can add a custom CSS. If you are CSS savvy and you wanna, you know, make some additional design changes, something that we haven't allowed for here, well, you can do anything you want. 
if you have the knowledge to do so by adding your CSS code within this box. And so those are the two, um, the two sections, the two, and this concludes the creation process of the widget opt-in. So when you're all done, you're just going to click Save and Exit. And once you've um, saved your widget opt-in, you're going to see it appears here within your, within your active opt-ins list. And it's also going to appear in your widgets um, area. So in order to add this widget, we first have to go to our widget management page within the WordPress dashboard. And to get there, you're going to click on the Appearances and then the widgets link. And this is going to show you all of your widget ready areas. And in my case, I have a sidebar here that I'd like to add the widget to. And you're going to look for the Bloom widget, which is right here. And you're just going to drag that into the sidebar. And you're going to see a couple options here. You can adjust the title. And then the most important thing here is the um, opt-in selection. And you're going to get a list here of all the widget opt-ins you've created. In our case, uh, we only have one, the one we just created. And so just this one um, opt-in form shows up, but there's no limit to how many opt-in forms you can create, and you can create different uh, widgets for different widget areas on your site, um, kind of tailor them to those specific posts or pages or categories, etc. So I'm going to select the widget opt-in just created, and I'm going to save. And so we've now created our widget, and um, we've added the widget to a widget-ready area, which is our sidebar. And so now I'm going to go to the front end and take a look at one of our posts and uh, see this form that we've added. So moving over to the blog, I'm going to check out one of these posts and look to the sidebar. And here you can see um, the widget that we just made shows up just as we designed it. And users can now subscribe to your blog um, as they're reading it. And so yep, that's, this is um, an example of how you create a widget opt-in with Bloom, as well as um, how you add that widget to a widget-ready area on your website.